Hello, my dear students. How's it going? Now, let's start this today. You are going to study next chapter about pharmacodynamics, and in this chapter, you mainly also study some terminologies and regularities about pharmacodynamics. This chapter includes this content. You will study several terminologies of adverse drug reactions and、uh, about the EC curve. You know, it, it describes the dose effect relationship. Here, you also study some terminologies, and then you also study mechanisms of drug action. And、the main content is about receptor theory, and based on this, you can study the classification of drugs acting on receptors. General classification of drug effects. You know, drug effects often means some functional change of the body caused by the drug. And these effects generally include two types: excitation and excretion. For example, if some drug act on the glands, you know, glands function is secreting some hormones or some fluids. Yeah. So when the section, the, the secretion of the glands is increased, so we said we will see that effect is by excitation or stimulation. When the secretion is decreased by the drug, that effect is inhibition. And the drug effects may be from direct action or indirect action. For example. There is a drug named by now epinephrine. This drug can increase blood pressure because it can directly activate activate alpha receptor of blood vessels, and they increase blood pressure because of vessel contraction. So this is direct action. It also probably induces decrease of heart rate. But actually, this is the indirect action of not epinephrine, because you know, in the whole body, when the blood pressure is increased, so there is a body reflex. Body will mobilize the mechanism to inhibit this response, so act on the heart. Maybe the result is decreased heart rate. So this is indirect action caused by non-epinephrine. Yes, maybe someone also can ask me. Non-epinephrine maybe has direct action on the heart. Yeah, it can also has a little activation on beta one receptor. Yeah, the result caused by beta one it is heart rate increase. This also is one direct action caused by non-epinephrine. But because non-epinephrine Has relatively stronger effect on alpha one than beta one, so the total result caused by heart、uh, caused by non epinephrine on heart rate, maybe the final is decrease. So because effect on the blood vessels predominate, so this indirect action predominate caused you know on the heart. Drug effect also have selectivity. This also often means or high or low. It's different from specificity of drug action. Specificity, for example, atropine or pirazepine. This drug has a specificity to an receptor. This is relatively high because they cannot act on alpha or beta other receptors. But this drug has big difference in their selectivity. Atropine compared with pirazepine has relatively low selectivity. 
So it has more effects and more therapeutic effects. It can be used to treat several different diseases, but it also has more side reactions. But compared with the atropine, pyrazine has a similar specificity on M receptor, but it has relatively high selectivity. It mainly acts on M receptor of stomach, so it has less effects and has less curative effects and side reactions. So it can be used to treat peptic ulcer, but actually not. Yeah. So because of drug-induced uh, therapeutic effects and adverse effects, so there is duality of drug effects. Yeah. Here, let's go and study therapeutic effects. Based on therapeutic effects, drug therapy can be divided into etiological therapy or symptomatic therapy. Etiological treatment means the objective of using drug is to eliminate the factors and cure the disease thoroughly. For example, replacement therapy, gene therapy, immune therapy, and the therapy by killing pathogens. This belongs to this. This belong to etiological therapy. For example, replacement therapy. You know there is a disease called by adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency means the hormones secreted from the great adrenal gland is not enough for the body. So, glucocorticoids used in the treatment of this disease. It is replacement therapy because it can supply enough hormone for the patients. Symptomatic therapy, it referred to the improvement of the disease symptom without eliminating the etiological factors. Actually, of course, when we have etiological therapy, yeah, it is a good thing. But sometimes. Maybe there is no etiological therapy. At this condition, symptomatic therapy also is very helpful. Very helpful. For example, you know, in China, there is epidemic caused by novel coronavirus. You know, but till now, there is no specific antiviral drug for this disease. So it is very terrible. Terrible, like now. And, uh, but you know, almost all therapies about this disease nowadays, it is symptomatic therapy. You know, to save the patient's life or inhibit the development of this disease, they are really very important. Yeah, hopefully. Scientists will find and uh, synthesize the specific antiviral drugs for this disease. Yeah, we all hope so. Okay, let's study adverse effects. It also causes by adverse reactions. It means the reactions that doesn't accord with therapeutic goal and may cause patients well. Uh, it may cause patient unwell, unwell, maybe harmful. They are divided into the following categories. Let's study one by one. Side effects or side reactions. Now look at this sentence. What does it mean? In the range of therapeutic dosage, the drug effects, which are not related to the current therapeutic purpose. You know these effects are described as side effects. I think maybe you still remember this curve. Here, in the range of therapeutic dosage, this means the dosage used should be in this curve. You know, after using this dosage, 
the drug concentration in plasma should be in between minimum effective concentration and minimum toxic concentration. You know, only in this scope, the drug concentration in plasma in this scope, it is effective and safe enough. So here, remember, there is a limitation about dosage. In the range of therapeutic dosage, the effect are not related to the current therapeutic purpose. They are side effects. So they are foreseeable. Usually, they are not very severe. And the patients can endure that. It also is hard to avoid. For example, there is a drug named by atropine. Just now I mentioned, it is one end receptor antagonist but it has very low selectivity. It can act on the heart, induce heart rate increase. It also acts on the intestine or stomach, makes the smooth muscle relaxed. So you know, when patients with bradycardia, maybe it is useful to increase heart rate. This is the therapeutic purpose of these patients, but act on the intestine you know, make the smooth muscle relax. Maybe it induces constipation. So this result is adverse effects. On the other hand, for the patients uh, with some um, effect on the intestine, like uh, abdomen um, part pain, actually maybe it is effective to make the smooth muscle relax and then relieve the abdominal pain. But act on the heart, you know, it increases heart rate. Maybe for some patients, it also is a bad result, you know. This also is sad reaction caused by effect on the heart. So this is foreseeable, but usually not very severe and very hard to avoid because it caused by the drug in the range of therapeutic dosage. Next one, toxic effects. They are harming reactions. Maybe a dose-related extension of therapeutic effects and may occur in all individuals if it is due to overdosage. You know, this is toxic effects. It may be a dose-related extension of therapeutic effects. So it also is foreseeable. But usually, they are severe, even harmful. And we should be avoid because it often caused by the drug in overdosage. For example, aspirin. <laughs> this drug is very commonly used. You know, anyone, for any individual, once the dose is above 5 grams in a day, it often induces a toxicity caused by salicylism. So this is toxic effects caused by aspirin. So when we use aspirin for any patients, don't use the drug dosage like this. And this toxic effects also uh, generally include acute or chronic toxic, uh, toxication, uh, toxicity, or you also include special toxicity, local toxicity, or uh, systemic toxicity. Yeah. Here, these are uh, side effects. And the toxic effects, they also limited by the dosage. This is in the range of therapeutic dose. This means caused by overdosage. So maybe you know you want to ask if the drug dose in the body is below minimum effective concentration, is there adverse effect? You have studied the side effects occurs in the range of therapeutic dose 
and the toxic effect caused by the drug in overdosage. So also there are some adverse effect caused by the drug below the minimum concentration, effective concentration, MEC. You know, the residual effect. It means the residual pharmacological effects when the drug concentration after drug of withdrawal is below the threshold concentration. Here, the threshold concentration, it just means the minimum effective concentration. You know, usually, after using a drug, after withdrawal, because of elimination, the drug concentration will decline, decline, even lower than this MEC. So once the concentration plasma is lower than this, so usually most drug, their pharmacological effects also decline, even disappear. But you know, for a few drugs, maybe they still have some pharmacological effects. For example, phenobarbital. This drug, it has a, an inhibition on seeing eyes. It can use to treat sleep disorders. You know, in the treatment of sleep disorders, you as a patient should administer this drug before sleep. And after the whole night, it also, you know, the drug will eliminate it. And the drug concentration in plasma uh, in the second morning, you know, maybe it is below this level. But some patients still feel hungover, like this niece, still sleepy. Not, you know, it is a residual effect caused by phenobarbital. You know, there also is a limitation about the drug dose or concentration. Don't forget this. Next one, withdrawal reaction. It means the primary disease worsens after a sudden drug withdrawal, you know. Once some drug used to treat some disease, especially after a long-term therapy, maybe induce this withdrawal reaction. Because, you know, during this long-term therapy, the body has, a, 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 has adapted to these conditions of using drug. So a sudden withdrawal usually induces the primary disease recover, you know, even worse. For example, clonidine. Actually, this drug, it is one antihypertensive drug because this drug can activate alpha-2 receptor in the presynaptic membrane and uh, decrease the neurotransmitter epinephrine, uh, uh, not epinephrine, neurotransmitter release decrease. So it can decrease heart rate and blood pressure. So work as an antihypertensive drug. But after using this drug for a long time, the body ad ad will adapt to this the condition. After a sudden withdrawal, you know, the body cannot adapt to this change. So maybe blood pressure increase suddenly, even worse than before. So this is withdrawal reaction. So for the drugs with withdrawal reaction, after a long-term therapy, usually, if you are a doctor, suggest the patients to decrease the dose and then stop administration. So it requires a relatively longer time to withdraw. Secondary reaction means that after long term of using broad spectrum antibiotics, the sensitive bacteria are abolished, and then it appears the over of non-sensitive bacteria, such as Staphylococcus and fungi. Well, I don't know you 
how to pronounce this, this word, fungi or fungi. <laughs> yeah, in English, it is fungi. Yeah. For example, tetraglycerin. You know, this drug, it is antibiotic drug with a broad spectrum. You know, many bacteria can be inhibited by this drug. So, but fungi, fun, fungi is not sensitive to this tetraglycerin. So after a long-term therapy of tetracycline, you know, maybe induce infection caused by fungi. You know, during these conditions of using tetracyclines, other bacteria are killed or inhabited by this drug. But fungi, fungi, it is not sensitive to this drug. So it may be induce the new infection, new infection. So this is the secondary reaction. Also caused by super infection. Yeah, when you study antibiotic drugs, you will study this again. Allergic reaction, it also comes by hypersensitivity. It is a response of the patient's immune system to the antigen. You know, it comes by antibody between the, anti the reactions between the antibody and the antigen. For example, penicillin, you know, it also is one famous antibiotic drug. But in for the for some individuals, maybe it can induce some allergic reactions. Maybe you know this, even allergic shock. Actually, this effect is independent of normal action of the drug. You know, this drug, the normal action, it is inhibit the synthesis of the cell wall of the bacteria but actually act on the body of our humans. You know, we don't have cell wall. So, but in some special individuals maybe induce allergic reaction because penicillin in the body can bind to some proteins and then form antigens. So stimulate immune system then occur the allergic reactions. This is independent of the normal pharmacological effect of penicillin. And the allergic reactions, it cannot be cured by pharmacological antagonists of this drug. And the body response usually are not dose related. You know, it is just uh, determined by the supersensitivity situation of the body. And it often occurs in the patients with supersensitive constitution. It is not dose related. You know, same patient, same dose at different uh, conditions. Maybe this allergic reactions difference. Idiosyncratic reactions. It is an abnormal reaction to a drug which is qualitatively different from the effect usually obtained in the majority of the population. You know, it is dose related, different from allergic reaction. It usually occurs in very few persons with genetic differences. You know, it's usually because of um, different gene. For example, Susanio Coli. This one is um, one of uh, skeletal muscle relaxant. Act on the skeletal muscle. It can block N2 receptor, induce the skeletal muscle relaxed, you know. But this drug is very interesting. It's a metabolism in the body depending on um, and them to metabolize. It is very fast. So after using this drug, this 
Relaxation on the scalp muscle. This effect does last for several minutes. It's very short. In the majority of the population, that effects just last for several minutes. It's very short. But maybe for some specific uh, specific people with some special gene. Because they are lack of enzyme to metabolize this succinylcholine, so in their body, after using this drug at the same dose as other normal people, you know, the result it means is prolonged skeletal muscle relaxation. So actually, it is unforeseeable. <laughs> so you know, maybe it is dangerous. You know, it is dose related. If the dose is more, so the reaction is more serious. Yeah, just occurs in very few persons with genetic differences. Yeah, both allergic reactions and idiosyncratic reactions all related to gene. Yeah, just occurs in a few people. Okay. These adverse effects, you know, most of them, you know, related to the dose. You know, side effects occurs in the therapeutic dosage. Toxic effects always caused by overdosage, even cumulative overdosage. And uh, residual effects, you know, it occurs in the drug concentration below the threshold concentration. And uh, visceral reactions, it uh, also happened as, uh, after a sudden visceral and allergic reactions. Although it is not related to uh, those related, um, but actually, um, it uh, also has that uh, um, peer experience of using drug, you know, and uh, idiosyncratic uh, reactions. It also related to the dose, yeah, has a dose related relationship. And uh, another one, secondary reactions, you know, it often caused by a long-term therapy of uh, broad spectrum antibiotics. But maybe you want to know, how about the, the relationship between the effect and the dose of a drug? In chapter three, you have studied EC curve, it is describe, it describes the relationship between the drug concentration in plasma and the time. You know, after administration, the drug concentration in plasma changes consecutively with the time. Based on the pharmacokinetic parameters, we can know about how about the concentration in the plasma. And you know, the drug effect always depends on the drug concentration in plasma. So there is a relationship between the drug effect and the concentration. So today, here, I will teach you those effect relationship of drug and curve. Before I introduce this relationship, I first introduce Graded response and quantum response. Graded response means the body response to the drug can be described by specific number. And uh, the change of the effect maybe occurs in some specific individual, just the one person. Yeah. For example, heart rate. Maybe some drug can increase the heart rate. If we use this drug as relatively low dose, maybe the heart rate increase relatively less. When we use this drug in a relatively high dose, heart rate increase more obviously. So that is graded response, like blood pressure, or glance secretion. This response are graded response. 
The counter response means the body response to the drug. Usually, we cannot use the specific number to describe, like dice. In, if one animal is dead, like a dog is dead, is dead, so we cannot say the dog is dead 50% or 80%. Yeah, we cannot use a specific number to describe. It just means this effect is if it is exhibits this effect, we can see the effect. This is positive effect. If the animal doesn't show that still alive, it means negative effect. This is counter response. We just use positive or negative to describe. The graded dose response relationship describes that in, search, in a certain range, the pharmacologic effect is increased with the increase in doses. Just in a certain range, there is a limitation about the drug dose. With the drug dose increase, but the response also increase. This is graded dose relationship, graded dose response relationship. The quantum response, in which the relationship is between the dose of the drug and the proportion of biological subjects displaying a given pharmacological effect. Just now, I mentioned just one individual, one biological subject. We cannot use some number to describe how much is that effect. We just use positive or negative to describe. So how to know how much is that effect? We can use the proportion, maybe the percentage of the group of biological subjects displaying um, given pharmacological effects shows positive effects. So first a study graded those response relationship. Animals or patients responses to a low dose of a drug usually increase in direct proportion to dose. As the dose increase, However, the response increase finally diminishes. Finally, with the dose increase, there is no further increase in response. So this relationship between drug concentration and effect, it is described by this hyperbolic curve. Graphic representation of those response data is frequently improved by plotting the drug effect against the logarithm of the dose or concentration. If, you know, this curve, x-axis value, it is the real drug concentration in plasma. If we don't use this, we use logarithmic concentration. So, but Y value doesn't change. So it is semi-logarithmic curve, EC curve. So this curve will transform from rectangular hyperbolic curve into sigmoid curve, this shape, sigmoid curve. The effect of this mathematical operation is to transform the hyperbolic curve into sigmoid curve. You know, it seems like the letter S. It has a linear mid portion. It's well known. The linear relationship is the 
simplest relationship. This transformation makes it easier to compare those response curves graphic, uh, graphically because it expands the scale of the concentration axis at low dose, like at low concentrations, where the effect is this low dose or low concentration. In this portion, the drug effect increases rapidly. And this curve comprise a this curve at right, uh, at high concentrations. It is a mathematical matter. So this sigmoid curve is more important and commonly used. So called dose effect relationship curve often is this sigmoid curve. Now, just now, I said with the drug do dose increase, the concentration increase, there is no further increase of body response to the drug. It means the effect reached to an upper limitation. So this effect is caused by Emax, maximal effect. We usually use the percentage of the Emax to describe how about the drug effect. This is the y value percentage of the Emax to describe. There are several concepts about the graded dose response relationship. Threshold dose. It indicates the least amount of drug required to exert therapeutic effects. I think you know the threshold this word. Last session, section, I mentioned this threshold concentration, you know, when I introduced residual effect. Remember that? Yeah. It means the least level to reach a given effect. Yeah. It, it threshold dose means the least amount of drug required to exert therapeutic effects. Emax means maximum effect. It also called by efficacy. Efficacy, it is the maximum response that can be produced by the drug. This concept is very useful. It usually used to judge how about the drug effect. EC50, it means the concentration of drug that produces 50% of maximal effect. This 50 means 50%. Here it means 50% of maximal effect. The ED50, it means the required dose to reach to produce 50% of maximal effect. Yeah. Just now, uh, I mentioned the dose or concentration different times in, in, yeah, in different situations. Actually, in this chapter, the dose or concentration, it often means the, how much is the drug. You know, the drug effect always depends on the drug administered the dose or concentration of the drug in plasma. So there is a direct proportional relationship between the dose and the concentration. So it's OK. If you understand, it's OK. No big problem between them. Maybe someone is curious about why this is EC50? It is not EC30 or 70. Why we choose this point? 
you know, on this curve, sigmoid curve, the EC curve of graded response. This EC50 is on the midpoint of this curve compared with the other portions. You know, this point has the highest slope. So it means when the x value has a little change, y value has obvious change. You know, in this mid portion, with the dose increase, the drug effect change rapidly. So this point, compared with the other points on this curve, it is the most sensitive. Very little dose or concentration changes. You will observe obvious effects change. Actually, there are two important properties can be determined by graded dose response curves. Just now, I introduced the efficacy. Now, let's look at potency. Potency is a measure of the amount of drug necessary to produce an effect of a given magnitude. Means to reach, to obtain a given effect, the required dose used to describe the potency of the drug. Usually, ED50 is used to determine potency. That's why just now I introduced ED50. <clears throat> the potency of a drug varies inversely with ED50 of a drug. If this is an experiment to invite you, usually use EC50 to describe. How about the potency? <clears throat> Therapeutic preparations of drugs reflect their potency. For example, candesatin and erbesatin. These are antihypertensive drugs. The therapeutic dose range of candesatin is 4 to 32 mg as compared to 35 to 300 mg for erbesatin. Therefore, candesatin is more potent than is erbesatin. You know, this the required dose for candesatin is much less than erbesatin. So, candesatin is more potent than arbesatin. Actually, sometimes when we evaluate some drugs has different effect, which one is more potent just based on potency or efficacy, it is not enough. Only one, it is not enough. Now, for, for example, look at this figure. It shows several EC curves of diuretics. These drugs are diuretics. One drug is named by furosemide. It ha has the highest Emax compared with other CERDAS. So it seems more potent than the others, but actually, it is not enough because for a given effect, the required dose of them are different. There is a big difference between them. So the required dose of cyclopanzer that this is the least, and the furosemide is much more than the eight. So based on this, ED50 of them maybe cyclopanzer that it seems more potent than fiososomite. But actually in the clinical practice, efficacy is a more clinically useful characteristic than its drug potency. 
since a drug with greater efficacy is more therapeutically beneficial than one that is more potent. So in this section, from graded dose response relationship, you have studied several concepts. Maybe you are curious about what will you learn from quantum dose response relationship. Let's go on study. Quantum dose response relationship. In the last section, I have taught you quantum response. Quantum responses means for all individuals, anyone, the effect either occurs or it doesn't. It also called by all or none response. An example of quantum effect is sleep or not asleep when a sedative hypnotic agent is given. Actually, graded responses can be transformed to quantum responses by designating a predetermined level of the graded response as the point at which a response occurs or not. For example, a positive response is defined as a fall of at least five times in heart rate. In quantum dose response relationships, the response elicited, elic elicited with each dose of a drug is described in terms of the cumulative percentage of individuals exhibiting a defined effect and is plotted against the log dose of the drug. So look at this curve. The x-axis, the value, it means the logarithmic of the drug dose. And the Y value is the cum cumulative percentage of individuals exhibiting a defined effect. You have studied the graded dose response curve. It expresses an individual's response to increasing doses of a given drug. This quantum response, dose response curve expresses a proportion of individuals' response to increasing doses of a given drug. Maybe you are still curious about this. So let me show you an experiment to explain effect dose curve of quantum response. This experiment is about morphine administered to the mouse. After administration, once the mouse has this response, it will show, show an abnormal posture, upward tail. So here, there are two mice in this experiment. No jack no abnormal posture. So here we can pull out a point at zero. When the dose is too empty, now there is one mouse with abnormal posture. So here we can plot this point at two ten percent. You know, one in 10 mice, it is 10%. So here, in this figure, we also can plot this point. With dose increase at 10 mg, now look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The number of the mice with abnormal posture is 5. So here, we can get this point at 10, 50 percent. But you know, among these five mice, one mice 
had abnormal cholesterol at two MD. Fomas exhibit this cholesterol at 10 MD. So we can get this point on this curve, on this figure. So this is 10, 40 percent. With the dose increase, there are more mass is heavy to abnormal posture, you know. So look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, the number of the mass with abnormal posture is 8. So we can plot this point, 20, 80 percent. In this figure, we can get this point, 20, 30 percent. You know, only three mass exhibit abnormal posture at 20 MD, and the, you know, one at 2 MD, four at 10 MD, only three at 20. So go ahead. We can plot this point on the curve. So here, maybe now you are clear. This is the cumulative frequency distribution curve. This is the real frequency of those needed. So convert the concentration of the drug, uh, the dose, into log concentrate a log dose. So we can get this plot. Maybe from the shape of the curve, you can understand. This is the sigmoid curve. For quantum response, this is the EC curve or ED curve for quantum response. This is the cumulative frequency distribution curve. This curve is the frequency distribution curve. Now look at this. On this curve, there also is one important point, the midpoint mid on this sigmoid curve. You know, just now I mentioned this describe the cumulative percent exhibiting therapeutic effect. This cumulative frequency distribution of individuals achieving the defined effect as a function of the drug concentration is the concentration percent curve or the quantum concentration effect curve. Yeah, so the midpoint on this curve this also is ED50, X value. This is ED50. And you know, this midpoint has the highest slope. You know, in the last section, when I told you, reading the dose response relationship, it is the most sensitive. You know, with a little increase or decrease of the dose, the effect altered more obviously around this point. On this curve, look at This point is the highest point compared with the others. You know, to reach the defined effect, there are more animals need this dose of the drug. So compared with the other animals or individuals, this is the most representative compared with the other dose. This is the most representative. So this point, ED50, is very useful. ED50 yeah, it means median effective dose. It means for all or none response, quantum response. It means the dose at which 50% of individuals exhibit the defined quantum effect. And for graded responses, 
yeah, you had studied this ED50. It's the dose of a drug that produces 50% of maximum effect. Maybe you still remember you have studied potency. Potency used to evaluate the drug's effect. And usually, potency is defined by the drug's ED50. So used to, to used to, we usually use use the ED50 to e evaluate or to care, 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 compare which drug is more potent. In the control dose effect relationship, if the positive effect is dash, you can know the median lethal dose. It, the aberration is LD50. <coughs> LD50 is a dose required to give the rise to the deaths of 50% of animals. It means the required dose to produce half animals dead. So this LD50, it usually used to evaluate drug's toxicity. It also used to evaluate the drug's safety. If the positive effect is a toxic effect, you also can get this concept, median toxic dose, TD50. It is a dose required to produce a particular toxic effect in 50% of animals. So similar to LD50, TD50, it also used to evaluate the drug's safety. Based on ED50 and LD50, you know, we can get this therapeutic, we can get therapeutic index, TI. It describes the safety of a drug. The value of TI is equal to the ratio of RD50 to ED50. Now, for example, if a drug with ED50 at 100 and its RD50 is 400, so the value of TI it is 4. Don't make mistake. LD50 is upper, the lower is ED50. So TI, the larger the ratio, the larger the TI, the greater the safety of the drag. There is another concept used to, to evaluate the drug safety. It is safety margin, SIM. It means the distance from ED95 to LD5. It also can be defined by this fraction, LD1 to ED99. Similar to TI. Now, the larger the safety margin, the safer the drag. For example, this drag, Walthurin, it is one anticoagulant. Maybe you still remember this. When I taught you plasma protein binding rate, when I explain for you about when I explain the competitive replacement phenomenon, I give you an example. I said this is Wolverin, you know. This drug has relatively higher plasma protein binding rate. When some drugs, another drug used a, a in combination with warfarin, maybe compete to bind to the plasma protein. So free drug increase compared with used alone of warfarin, warfarin, maybe it will in, lead to hemorrhage, the adverse effect caused by warfarin. Yeah, look at this figure. 
It means this flower fern has a relatively has a relatively narrow safety margin. Now look at it. this green curve. The effect is the desired therapeutic effect. So the range of therapeutic dose is in this scope. This red curve, you know, the effect is toxic effect or adverse effect, unwanted. Now, with the dose increase, warfarin's anticoagulation, that effect also increase. Eventually, all patients respond. However, at a higher dose of warfarin, anticoagulation resulting in hemorrhage occurs in a small percent of patients. So actually, this warfarin has a relatively lower TI, therapeutic index. Actually, it is not safe enough. You know, look at here. When some individuals use this drug at relatively higher dose, actually, maybe someone uh, at this risk of hemorrhage like this, because this, this point, this dose, it also is on this curve. So it is not very safe. It's bioavailability may be critically alter the therapeutic effect. But penicillin, now compared with this one, it has relatively wider safety margin. You know, its therapeutic window is wider. So penicillin is very safe and very common to use in the clinical practice. Even sometimes to, in order to achieve a desired response, some individuals use this drug in a relatively high dose, even more than the minimum required dose to reach the desired response. Yeah. So it has no risk of adverse side effects. The bioavailability of penicillin doesn't critically alter the therapeutic effects. But you know, TI and safety margin, both of them can be used to evaluate the drug's toxicity and safety. But sometimes, only use one of them to evaluate is not enough. For example, here, drug A. Now look at, and this is a line. You know, sigmoid curve, the mid portion is a line. So here, just to show that mid portion, so just draw a line. This curve is the therapeutic effect as quantum response. And this curve, the effect is this. So here, now let us count this curve is lethal effect dose curve, RD curve. And this curve is a therapeutic effect curve, a dose curve. So this is ED curve, ED curve. The required dose for lethal dose, yeah, it is much more than effective effect. This is for drug B, ED curve. This is LD curve of drug B. So look at it. Drug A and drug B, they have the same value of ED50 and LD50. 
So according to the definition of a therapeutic index, you know, the ratio of LD50 to ED50, both the value of TI, of their TI, you know, it is, you know, because of same value of ED50 and LD50, so their TI also as the same. Can we conclude drug A is as safe as drug B? Actually, it's not. Be just because of this point, the two curves, you know, overlapped at this point. But actually, drug A and drug B, ED curve and LD curve, you know, they have different slope. For drug A, you know, when we want to get the effect at relatively <coughs> closer to Emax, yeah, the required dose is this. It's much less than the required dose to induce dice. So it's very safe. But drug B, if to achieve a relatively stronger response, effect, a therapeutic effect, but you know, a small percent of the patients are at the risk of dying. So it is so very dangerous. So the result is toxicity of drug B is higher than that of drug A. Okay, now in this section, you mainly studied quantum response dose re relationship. In this part, you studied several concepts too, including ED50, LD50, TD50, and you also studied the two index to evaluate the drug's toxicity and safety. They are therapeutic index and safety margin. And you know, in the clinical practice, to use the drug to diagnose or pre uh, prevent or treat disease, the, it must be effective. And at the same time, it also must be safe enough. So these concepts are very important. You should know well. But maybe you still want to know how do the drugs bring about the functional change of the body, you know, including therapeutic effects and adverse effects. I mean, what is the mechanism of drug action? Okay, that's all for this section. Go to study next class.